in Nepal. I just uh, want to thank the Nepali, American Society of Nepalese Engineers for organizing this event and to give this opportunity to know about through our friends from Fairfax County Urban Rescue and uh, Search Team. We have been able to know much about with the visual presentation. So we, we are very thankful to them and uh, the Embassy of Nepal would appreciate and thank all the association, Nepalese association who has been so kind of organizing such uh, programs and uh, appreciating our search and rescue team. I have been attending many functions like this and uh, it is so nice of you all Nepalese people living abroad. In fact, I would like to share, you know, many of the relief, rescue, and uh, uh, relief works, immediate relief, has been come from many countries, like the search and rescue team from 15 countries, and one of them, the biggest one in the U.S. And we are thankful to U.S. government also, who are very prompt to send this mission and to save the life of many people who are, because of the urban rescue was very important, we were not very much uh, skillful on that. This, uh, they have been able to say, uh, save many people in Kathmandu. And our security force was uh, also very capable of doing these things and uh, working side by side with this team. And we have been able to save, I mean, 12,000 people were rescued by air and by land transport, transportation. So this way we, we have been able to save those who are I mean, the yeah, victim of the earthquake because of this rescue and search mission. And we have been receiving, we have received almost 134 missions from around the world. And then mostly from the U.S., I think, they, they are, because there are many volunteer organizations from Nepal, the police community, and also from the American community. They were, they were, they were, they, they were in Nepal immediately after the uh, earthquake. So this way we have, received so much of sympathy and uh, concern from people around the world. This is mainly, you know, we have receiving this kind of support from different countries, very old friends like U.S. and so many other countries. And similarly, we have received relief materials from 34, uh, more than 60 countries where it depends because of the Nepalese diaspora, the main key for this kind of help, accumulating this kind of help, because their goodwill has helped a lot for receiving such, such uh, cooperation from, 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 from the countries around the world. So we are very thankful to our Nepalese diaspora for mobilizing this kind of <coughs> relief and uh, uh, all kind of support for Nepal in this hour of need. So I just want to share some of the things like Nepal is earthquake prone zone. We are the 11th country of earthquake prone zone in the history also we have Nepal had experienced earthquake in 1215 or something, 1255. And our king, I think it may be for information for <laughs> Tom and John, because our king was killed on that earthquake, King Awe Malda. And we have also experienced 1934, the big earthquake, eight years back, which has killed more than the people we have uh, died this time. So this way, we are very vulnerable in the, for the earthquake. So we need to, I think uh, we need to do like uh, the thing here. Yeah. And on behalf of DC chapter of American Society of Nepalese Engineers, I'm host of this program. And namaste, very good morning, warm welcome. We are here today to talk about very noble region and very sensitive topic. And we all remember on April 25th, a devastation, 7.8 magnitude earthquake stroke in Nepal and also affected nearby Indian border and big avalanche in Himalayan area, including Mount Everest. And that very unforeseen devastation, Nepal lost 
more than 9,000 people and around 700,000 homes has been damaged or destroyed and 22,000 people injured from that catastrophe. So as per the data of National Planning Commission, around 600 billion rupees, rupees needs to be budgeted to be reconstruct for that damage and destruction. And more about we have need assessment for this uh, disaster has been prepared by the government of Nepal. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome you all this morning here, waking up early in the morning. And I'd like, you, I'd like to express my uh, deepest gratitude to you all. Thank you very much for being here today. After a devastating uh, April 25, 7.8 uh, vector scale earthquake, uh, everybody in Nepal and around the world has been moved by it. Everybody in Nepal has been affected to some extent about uh, 8,000, more than 8,700 people lost their lives. Not only Nepal, uh, world has been moved by it. Uh, I'm sure you have read about it. Mount Everest literally moved. And so does uh, Kathmandu. Its effect has been irreparable and unbearable to us. While its effect has been uh, very bad, unfortunately, it was not unexpected. Uh, experts have consistently placed Nepal and Kathmandu as the top 10 uh, most vulnerable cities in the world. Yet, we people, uh, our government, and our society has not been up to task. And that's why, that's, and we're seeing the effect of that. There, there were some uh, civil society and organizations who were working on it. Uh, and one of them uh, was also, is uh, our organization too. So right around 2010, uh, we felt that we need a we need to increase the awareness of earthquake and its effect and uh, what we can do afterwards. So we developed a position paper. Uh, we started working on it in 2010 and we were just... In that program, everybody thought that, well, this is a good thing, but we don't know when earthquake happens. Tomorrow, today, next year, 10 years after, 50 years after, but Unfortunately, within six months of the program, earthquake happened, and we realized that oh, we had done this way before. This position paper, uh, actually, we started this in 2010, and there is an involvement of many organizations in America, in Nepal, in Canada, and many people, many specialists, and many um, experts has their view on this paper. And it was finally, when it, it was going to the press, the earthquake happened. And we released immediately after that. It is online right now. And um, if you want, you can download it and read it. I would say this is the Gita for disaster mitigation disaster reduction, planning, strategy kind of thing. I will briefly describe about what it has and the detail you can read in the um, book. Um, I'll try to explain in English, but 
I guess I feel better in Nepali in explaining what it means. So uh, I would like to say sorry to John, okay. um, <laughs> Tom, and Nancy if I you don't understand, but you still can read the slides. All right, let's move move ahead. You say American Society of Nepalese Engineers, Can USA, or Nepal Medical Foundation of America le tinoda ko joint venture ma tayar gariye ko paper ho. Tesma Ramesh Babu Malla, jun our society ka founding president ho, wahan le lead garnu baako ho yu paper tayar garnu ko lagi. Ra yu aile maile Tesla present garde isu. Mero dehre input baare hoy na ki yu hami le release garaya baare maile se yu baare kahi ya arla jana gari di mala gari do. First of all, let's go back and look at what it looked, how it looked like um, when the clock tower, Gharar, uh, Gandhagar, I mean, the Gandhagar, when I said Chongtis, man, who already, yes, to thio. Over this, but see, yes, to boy, after, I mean, when I say no, we have to Unfortunately, we have to go to the hospital. We have to go to the hospital. We have to go to the hospital. We have to one guru, your question paper, describe the area. The total floor area count is the same compared to the land they have. If you are the Nepal Mabin, Nepal Mansa. Manu, high rise building, or Bukampa, one of the family, Afi Yad Sanu. That will fall, fall first or that will fall first? If they are constructed with the same technical material and same history. Okay. Then I mean, so we'll have a big deal. Although, our code is standard, our area of retrofit is going to be done. National Fire Code. And Fire Code is going to be done. Although, you are building my Ago Lago Mane. यो कोठा बड़ा त्यो कोठा में आग रोकना को लगी वाल में दे हैव सम फायर रेजिस्टिंग मटेरियल एंड देर इज सम टाइम लैगिंग बिटवीन व्हेन फायर गोज फ्रॉम हियर टू अदर रूम दिस इज द स्टैंडर्ड अने क्यों उनसे वने यो कोठा में फायर आग लगे वने दम कल आंधा अनला आधा घंटा लगे वने आधा घंटा समय फायर त्य the same content girls and the new ones. The Pura report Maliki Townsend. Test our building Aitka Kuransen. Seventy five feet summer. Like different technology use on Javane, fire and rescue Golagi. If the building is higher than seventy five feet, if there is a floor register, people living above seventy five feet, there are different regulation things. Electrical, plumbing, mechanical, building code. In your pure area, all of them are going to be done. John and I, John's been on the team since when? Since like that, 1999. Just like a, as a real brief synopsis, uh, the team's made up of all volunteers. Uh, Tom and I work uh, as, as structural engineers with different engineering firms, and we volunteer for this team. And so when we deploy, we, at least I generally take unpaid time off. Right. Yeah. My, my office creates some issues sometimes. <laughs> Disappear for two or three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but real quick, I've been I've been on the team since 1999. Uh, I've been working as a structural engineer for a little bit over 20 years now. Yeah. And Tom, you've been on the team since uh, really 2014, I guess. No, no, 2012. 2012. Yeah. And um, this was Tom's first. Yeah. Yeah. My first, yeah. So. Um, you know, my entire time on the team was training, and so we were 
in the middle of a training exercise when the uh, when the earthquake happened. And so we were all sort of, we had our stuff ready to go, which we we're supposed to have our stuff ready to go anyway, but um, we all had it, you know, we were already sort of, we had it packed and then unpacked because we were in the middle of the training and then, you know, that morning we heard about the earthquake and uh, they said, training's not canceled, but, you know, be ready to go. And, you know, as the day went on, we were sort of, we thought maybe we weren't going to go because we hadn't heard anything. And then all of a sudden we got the call to say, you know, you're going to Nepal. And so we were, I was up in Maryland, uh, and you were still in Fairfax. Um, and they sent the team that I was with on a helicopter back to Fairfax. And then we, so then we sat there for a little while and then went to Dover. And then that first, you know, picture with us on the C-17 with all our stuff behind us. Uh, that we take with us um, most of the loop up there. But, uh, uh, so I throw in a little bit more background. Um, I'm not sure how familiar folks are with the Fairfax County team, but it was first established in 1986, uh, part of, uh, from that, or effect of the Mexico City earthquake. Uh, USAID and State Department determined there was a great need for search and rescue operations. So when those earthquakes had occurred, there they asked Fairfax County's fire department. And if there would be a collapsed building there. And so it was, so we, the, you know, two things we realized was that what, what we do a lot of times is what's called a windshield survey, where we just kind of drive around and we're just trying to find places and then sending people back to that. We realized that wasn't going to work in Kathmandu because the streets were pretty uh, chaotic. I mean, I, you know, and, and not, I mean, there's not really a defined grid system and it just seemed like buildings just kind of got placed where there was space and so even even if you were driving to a building sometimes you would have to park and then walk through alleys to get to it there was no way to actually drive to it right the other thing we realized it was that it was extremely safe um and you know we were i was out at 3 a.m that night with nothing but a headlamp and i had i was with uh tracy right? it was me and tracy right? And we would, everywhere we went, we'd gather this crowd of people and never did we feel threatened at all. Everybody just said, thank you. Yeah, say, yeah. say regards to crime, because yes. um, Haiti, Haiti was a different story. Haiti was, was pretty pretty unsafe at night. It was you, gunshots everywhere and small riots everywhere in, in Haiti. So okay, the answer's been answered now. And with that, uh, I'd like to open the floor for questions, uh, about uh, five minutes maybe. Yeah. yeah, please go ahead. When the, mostly when it's a reinforced building, it's not because of the reinforced, I saw it fell because of the detail. Yes. Because it was not properly lapped, and yeah. uh, when the hot is a beam and the column was not properly tied, I just realized something like that. And you have I see so many buildings. What do you think on that? Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, like I said, there was always some sort of little anomaly. Like if it was done, by the prescriptive code and it was a reasonable height, then it did pretty well. Um, but, you know, little things like, yeah, there was a couple buildings that I saw where at the column the joint, the bars were spliced right. like this, not like that, right? Um, there was another building that we looked at that had collapsed and the bars looked like they're about right, but the concrete quality was, the, I could literally just dig the concrete with my hands. And so, you know, there was those sort of little things, you know, that, you know, John and I started talking about, like, well, you know, what, what made this building different than that building? I and mean, the same building, but, you know, why did this one collapse and that one didn't? You know, and we thought, eh, maybe there's, you know, one bad contractor or something like that that doesn't, you know, splice the bars correctly or, you know, and then a few days later is when I found out about how this guy had built this house on top of, you know, um, uh, an unreinforced wall. And so there's always, you know, there's the prescriptive code, but, there was one house that I looked at that it was one frame by four frames, you know, so the only one. And, uh, you know, um, other overhead structures, but I never heard of underground structures. You know, what are the conditions of those underground structures? Um, or do you know anyone's doing as a signal of those underground structures after this, uh, you know, Army installations, everything was on grid. There were a few garages in Kathmandu that we didn't see. Is that what your question is? Or are you no, talking no, about specifically? Not specifically the building, but uh, um, but like, 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 like water, 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 water
right, right, right. Um, well, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of times, I mean, even even here, those things get, I mean, that's the first thing that happens. There's gas leak, you know. Um, uh, the sewers, yeah, the sewers were obviously fairly well damaged. Um, the uh, power, I mean, the power did end up coming back on while we were there. I mean, we were always on uh, generator power, but yeah, um, yeah, I would, for, and there, there seemed to be a lot of inter infrastructure work. Yes, because you are saying that this uh, earthquake preparedness and this is very good for this type of situation. I mean, back in Nepal or any country. Have American Society of Nepalese Engineer provided this information to there are so many engineering colleges in Nepal. Our government, like um, engineering, you know, we were working for this. Our uh, NCA, you know, in that way, American Society of Engineering is working or not. Thank you. Because this 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 paper, you know, as a member of American Society of Engineering also, uh, I found very good. I never went for the internet okay. side. You know, okay, well. thank, thank you, Dr. Sundar, for the question. Mm -hmm. uh, that's right. We have Nepal Legion Committee in our society. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ananda Baidya is working on that, and he is currently in Nepal leading a team of engineers. And he is uh, going to the press and publishing all those and distributing to all the agencies, wherever it needs. First, we have now uh, printed like thousand copies. We'll see how the demand would be. And based on the demand, we will be printing more in the